Clipping planes and voxel display have been proved in this version. And I'd like to just review those functions with you really quickly in a part inspection. So to do that, I'm just going to import a CAD model. So I hit the import button and select a sheet metal part that I can scan here, which is on my table. So it comes in. Then I'm going to add my instrument. Go to the instrument tab, say add instrument. And I can just select the picture and add the, pic add the instrument directly to the job. Then I want to connect it so that it's ready to measure. So now I have my toolbar which is ready to control it. So one of the functions that we've added in this version is the ability to scan a clipping plane. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I can go to my clipping plane and prepare a clipping plane. So now it is defined and all I need to do is add data to it. So I'll do that now. I'm just going to go ahead and start scanning and scan the tabletop in little sections. And as you can see, each time I scan a section, um, it is updating the, the position and orientation of that plane to ensure that I have good data coverage and that that, that uh, clipping plane is going to I, uh, surround my part. As soon as I'm done, I can simply stop trapping. And it'll immediately change the cloud name and uh, update it so that you're ready to scan. And I can just start scanning my part. And as you can see, a cloud in SA doesn't have any three-dimensional look to it. It's sort of a solid color. And that was one thing that gets a little bit hard to see at times, to see contours. And so in this version, we've added the ability to display more of a 3D effect. You can do that by turning on the voxel display. And this voxel display is um, a, a nice averaged look. So you, each volume has its own point, which defines the best location in that volume and it's constantly being recomputed so you can just simply scan in this mode. The other thing that you might notice is that the data that's coming in is uh, a leading edge and you, so you can see where the data comes in and then it's being recomputed on the fly to update the position of the voxels which is the best distribution of data. And you can turn on the camera view, but I'm just going to rotate it around, make life real easy here. Okay, so I now have a scanned part with pretty good coverage. You can see that the coverage is pretty evenly distributed. And um, we can now align this to the CAD model. And to align it to the CAD model, which is way over there, all you need to do is right click on it and say align to CAD. And this works really quite well if you um, have good data coverage and you've used a clipping plane like this to exclude any extraneous data that really doesn't have any effect. So I'm just going to say go. It will try and compute a transform. And you can look at the RMS, looks reasonable. Say yes, and it'll align. So there you go. Now to get the color display or the color map of where the deviations are in the part, you need to stop the instrument interface. That's one thing that you need to do in order to update the graphics with a relationship. So what we're going to do is go to features, build a relationship between this cloud and this CAD model. And then there is a additional option here for the voxel settings to display rather than the pseudo surface which is the new function to show more of a 3D look you can go to using the relationship deviations which is much more like a vector group so you can go to the vector groups colors and adjust the settings as necessary and in this case I'm just going to tighten it up a bit to get more color so you can say OK and you can also show a color bar and apply and this should then compute the deviations between the cloud and the CAD part. So you can see that in the graphics. And to get a little bit more information, you can add a call out by going to the report page, 
and adding voxel callouts. So I can simply click on the part and get an idea of the deviations in particular areas of the, and you can get an idea of how much deviation there is in specific locations. So there you go. That's pretty simple. This has been added to a callout, and if you want to add that to report, you can just see add that to an active report. And if you don't have one yet, it'll automatically add it for you. So there it is. You have your callout view. And we are going to go ahead and add the relationship as well so you get the statistical information that goes with that report. So that's all for now.